And welcome back to Micro Queers. It's your bi weekly queer horror short roundup, and I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and we're talking um, sexy danger time in the latent image, everybody. Indeed. Yeah, this is uh, a short from the UK. Mm -hmm. And we should probably acknowledge that this is not an easy to find short, unlike all of the other micro queers. Yeah, you've got to do a little bit of hoop jumping. But you know, if y'all listen to our episode on the Wolves of Cromer, which came out earlier this week, um, we don't normally discuss streaming platforms because licenses change all the time. So Mm -hmm. if someone listens to this two years from now, who knows? But um, to find this short, actually, we're kind of promoting the uh, streaming platform. Deku, which specializes in queer entertainment. Um, I do want to point out this is not a sponsored episode. We are not being paid to promote this. We're just being good Samaritans. Uh, <laughs> but um, Deku is normally $10 a month, but they, you can do a three-day free trial. So, since we have this dropping the same week as Wolves of Cromer, you can do that three-day free trial and knock out these two uh, pieces of art. Yeah, exactly. And if people haven't had a chance to check out the latent image, it is a 20 minute short by Alexander Burrell. And it is about a young writer who retreats to an isolated cabin to work on a mystery thriller. And one night, a mysterious stranger arrives at his door needing help. Yeah, it's um this short. It it really bounced around a lot for me where I was like, oh, this is what we're doing. Oh, this is what we're doing. Oh, this is what we're doing. <laughs> Well, I'm interested that you say that because I definitely was like, oh, this feels like a miniature Stephen King story. Like, it's giving yes. me misery vibes. It's giving me secret window vibes. You know, this oh idea. God. I was going to say secret window. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good. I'm not like completely off track here. No, but I, not at all. I love, like, this is kind of catnip for me. I'm a big fan of horror that tackles the creative process and like particularly writing because obviously I can relate to it. So this idea that this guy is struggling with his writing, you know, he goes to a cabin retreat, which is something I've always wanted to do. And of course, then Mm -hmm. he starts to write what is happening in real life into his story. And I also love the, I, you know, you know me, I love an ambiguous ending. So I, I love that you can read this short in a very literal sense, like, Oh, okay. He is murdered by this stranger. Or you can read it as what we're actually getting is just his story. So yeah, this is the second time that I had seen this short. And I confess, the first time, it's not that I wasn't paying attention the entire time, but I definitely ended it like, oh, that was more ambiguous than I wanted it to be. And watching oh, okay. it again this time, I was like, oh, I read this 100% literally. I'm I'm of the, he is dead, but the latent image will, you know get his killer caught maybe or like something so Mm -hmm. um i but there's like a year gap between me watching these and so i just i don't know like i don't know why i read it more literally this time and more ambiguously the last time i i think the intention from what i took away from it is that you should read it literally like he is dead and that's why we get the push into the camera to the title card at the end of the short but Mm -hmm. for me i was like but wait how did he write this or did he just you know foreshadow his own death because he kind of knew that the outcome was going to be like this yeah no i very much took so so we have Again, we kind of have, like, bouncing realities here, right? Like, it starts, and, you know, we're in the real world, but then we have the stranger pop up, but then, yeah, then he starts writing, and so then we kind of go into a fantasy world. I mean, fantasy world, but it's still presented as real. Yes. But then life starts imitating art, and it gets kind of Mm meta-y. We also have what I'm going to say is a rape fantasy. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, I, I say that because I'm just like, why? Well, I like watching this scene. So, I mean, listeners, if you haven't seen the short, and like, you know, whatever. <laughs> I mean, hopefully you have, but like, th- there's a bit where he's going through the stranger's duffel bag, and you know, the stranger comes out of the shower, and then a, essentially he does rape him. But then we cut back, and it's one of those, oops, it was only a 
well, not a dream, like a. It's like a, a rape fantasy. Yeah, but then like it kind of leaves it there, right? Like there is mm-hmm. kind of this really intense sexual tension and like steam between the two of them throughout the entirety of this. I would argue up to a certain point where it's like, oh no, like he's gonna kill him. Like that—that's that, yeah. what this is. <laughs> yeah, it, it it for me it was an interesting uh, build up to a certain extent because I almost wanted this stranger to be more sexy because initially he just you know he shows up he's bleeding blood it seems like maybe he isn't as badly injured as we first thought when he wakes up the next day but he's always got a sense of malice so i i wanted the the balance between sexy and danger to be a little bit more even because i was just getting like holy shit this guy's bad news get out of there kind of deal no yeah so, hey, so I, I, because so Joshua Tonks, who plays uh, Robert, the the protagonist of this short, mm-hmm. he's a relative newcomer. But the guy that plays the stranger, and I looked this up because I thought it was hilarious. So his name is Jay Clift, and his IMDb is he is one of Canada's most sought after stage performers. Okay, and I was like, okay, like that makes sense. But then I looked at his filmography, and he has appeared in many CW shows, including yes. Riverdale, Legends of Tomorrow, Batwoman, The One Hundred, and Supergirl. So I was <laughs> like, okay. I see you, Canada. And I'm willing to bet that he plays some kind of crime boss or petty thief <laughs> in all of those. Or like, like, like a security guard or like, they're like bit parts. But still, I was like, okay, like this makes sense. But I do agree with you, though. Like it's, it was to the point where I was kind of like, Robert, like, come on, this guy is not good news. This is not like uh, flirting with danger. This is like, no, 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 he's dangerous. Get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it's funny, though, because I said that to myself right at the very moment where, so the stranger has left for some nefarious purpose, and then uh, Robert is waiting for him to return, and he's not sure if he will. It starts to rain. He's standing out on the porch, and he's sucking on a lollipop, and I was like, here we go. with some nice phallic imagery. Yes! <laughs> and then the man, the stranger, <laughs> comes back, and he takes the sucker, this lollipop, out of Robert's mouth and puts mm-hmm. it in his own and then sticks it back into Robert's. And I like that that was sexy danger because I was like, oh, it's sexy that he's like sucking on the same thing that was in this other man's mouth. But then the way that he shoves it back into Robert's mouth and Robert is like not having it, like you you can tell that he's struggling mm-hmm. with I'm attracted, but I know this is a bad thing. And that was when I was like, oh, yes, I'm into this now. But that's when I think that, okay, so like, I mean, when we're talking about the rape fantasy, it's like, okay, so is this actually his is like something he's contemplating wanting to happen or is it strictly a oh no this is just a set piece for his book type thing hmm. I, I, that's actually really interesting so have you did you ever watch six feet under yes i did okay so there's a like really i think it's important to no. me as a queer viewer not the dog episode no i don't know is it the dog episode there's the one where david gets like attacked for the whole episode for, by this guy, the stranger. Yes. So, Ugh. so basically the, the character of David played by Michael C. Hall, he is the, the queer brother on this show, which is about like siblings who run a funeral, uh, a funeral home. And he basically is abducted by someone. I, I feel like I remember this individual being like a drug addict or something like he's, he's dangerous. Yeah, so the reason I said dog episode is because the episode is called That's My Dog. Um, It's okay. season four, episode five. The actor that plays the, uh, like the, the villain is someone who's like, he's somebody. But anyway, I'm sorry. So that's not important, but go ahead. All this to say, there's a moment where, so David is basically constantly in peril and you're worried that he is going to be assaulted or killed by this man who seems to be homophobic. But there's a moment where they're driving and David imagines a highly sexually charged encounter with his individual and then he kind of snaps out of it and you realize that even though his life may be in danger he is still kind of imagining how like how fucking hot it would be to fuck this guy and that was a hundred percent the vibes that i was Mm. getting in the short where it i think it really plays on this idea of the line between sexuality and danger and risk and like I do think that we see it a lot in straight relationships, but I, I'm just thinking of like the act of cruising apps where you don't really know who you're connecting with. Sometimes it's just pictures and you can't see faces mm-hmm. and you're inviting people to your house or you're going to theirs. There's something about the queer lifestyle and particularly queer men that I think 
does lend itself to this. And I'm thinking of like all the shorts that we've watched in Microqueer, so many of them have like a dangerous yeah. hookup element. And, and that's the thing, right? Like without the queer aspect, this is just quote in air quotes, like a, a pretty standard like narrative here. And it is that queer aspect that kind of sets it apart for me where it's like, oh, but like I can see why even though all like signs are pointing to red, there's still like this kind of like, but I want to do it because honestly, the vibe of the first half of this short felt very like high quality production porno where I was like, yeah, okay, okay, like I am really even going into the rape lane. And it's kind of controversial to, to say because it's rape. But the fact is, though, that, that um, it's a fantasy. rape fantasies are, well, yeah, rape fantasies are something that people have. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting that vibe from it the entire time until we kind of make this switch. But yeah. it was very hot. <laughs> Like, oh, I mean, I I won't lie. I was like, oh no, but also, oh yes, and yeah, kind I mean, of. I, I I initially I was taken aback when you said, oh, there's like a kind of porno feel to it, but then I realized, oh, I mean, this stranger arrives, he's he's bleeding, but then when he wakes up in the morning, Robert's looking at him, and he's nude on the couch except for yeah. a blanket that's covering his junk, and you're like okay, there's there's something going on here. And I don't mean like, oh, it's like a porn in like a production value or acting value. Oh, no. It's merely no, no. in the setup. Like this felt like a porn setup to me and something maybe a little bit more hardcore. But I mean, that being said, I mean like, yeah, I, I, I did like this a lot. That being said, I don't know if I want to see a feature length version of it. Not to say you can't make something out of it, but like this feels like a good short story to me. It is tricky, yeah. So generally when we start to get shorts that are approaching the 20 minute mark or longer, it starts to feel mm -hmm. like this is a proper short film. Like you have developed characters, you have given us arcs, you have, you know, yeah. often delivered a payoff. It's not as, they, they're less reliant on these twist endings that would be like, ooh, I would love to see more of that if this was a feature length. I would like to see a feature length version of this because I can't imagine it as a kind of Stephen King narrative like what we saw in Misery and Secret Window and you know any other story like that and I think you could really play it out as like how isolated is he maybe he has a friend who stops by and like does that friend get murdered or like who is the body in the trunk like you could tease out all of the well, encounters a little more I think that's why I'm like when I'm thinking of Secret Window which is a movie and a story that I don't like because I just I really hate the ooh the hero and the villain are the same person because they have split personalities I'm um, spoilers for Secret Window spoilers for Secret Window <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like ah uh, like I I feel like if you stretch this out, anyone would want to do something something that was a twist to it. And right. I just, I think I prefer in this particular case, a more straightforward aspect mm -hmm. that's like a drama with thriller elements. Right. Um, I don't need more bodies piled up onto this. And I feel like that would be the instinct to go, to go that route. Yeah, I mean, what I was describing was a very conventional yeah. narrative, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Part of it was that I I just love certain cinematic techniques in here. Like there's a moment where Robert says, oh, well, I'm going to go start the car so that I can drive you into town. And he's secretly like, I'm going to get the fuck out of here, but he can't start the car. Yeah. And then he hears something and we, we cut to a blank typewriter page and it just writes out tap, tap, tap. And then you realize that that's actually mm -hmm. the man tapping on the window of the car. And that kind of just like yeah. little visual, it's not a twist. It's uh, like a flourish in a way. No, but but, but it's, it's like blurring the narrative a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I like that kind of thing. But it, as long as it doesn't descend into like, oh, twisty turny, what is real? Like, I, I think you could play it to a certain point, but I agree. Yeah, it could very easily descend into, oh, what is reality? And what is the book? Like, this is good at 20 minutes. A feature length might be too much. Right. Whereas, and you're focused on that, whereas I'm focused on dialogue like, well, I don't really like that much exposition. I like my stories lean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I chuckled. Like I, I like the meta textual references in here because I thought that they were yeah. obvious but also cute and winky enough. I, I agree. I mean, I think there were a lot of good touches here. I would like to see more from this director. I, and actually, because Tonks is also a co-writer on this short, yes. um, he co-wrote it with the director Burrell. Um, but you know, I, I think that this is really good. Um, it and yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah. No, it. I, I, it, you're right that it is a little 
straightforward. I think if anything, it's just because we've seen these kinds of narratives before, but I was actually mm-hmm. really happy with the way this all plays out. And I, I mean, oh, yeah. we, sh- we should probably also acknowledge late in the game at this point that we both know Joshua, uh, like we, Mm-hmm. spoken with him a couple of times I mean, so he, he, he's a listener of the show and yes. he has we have conversed like <laughs> yes. um but i i quite liked his performance no i i agree well it, it was a bit more um i'm guessing i'm gonna say subtle than uh clift's this is not say i think clift is bad i just think that he is more again you know my favorite phrase mustache twirly than i think he needs to be yeah i i think he could have dialed it back because mm-hmm. it, it does feel like he's playing maybe in a CW show. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and listeners, that is not an insult. We both love CW shows. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so let us know what you thought of this short, everyone. Um, I'm curious. Uh, again, it's one of our longer shorts that we've covered, but I think there's a lot here to unpack. And on that note, we can cross out the latent image. Yes, and cross out micro queers. <laughs> Disgusting Podcast Network, home of creepy, or disturbing, and terrifying creepy pastas, SCP archives, weekly full cast storytelling, horror queers, genre commentary from an LGBTQ perspective, and the Boo Crew. For horror centric interviews, listen free wherever you stream audio and at bloodydisgusting.com slash podcasts. It was late in the afternoon when the professor and I took our way towards the east, whence I knew Jonathan was coming. Jonathan Harker has asked me to note this, as he says he is hardly equal to the task, and he wants an exact record kept. Dear Madam Mina, I have read your husband's so wonderful diary. Strange and terrible as it is, it is true. I will pledge my life on it. God preserve my sanity, for to this I am reduced. Safety and the assurance of safety are... Things of the past. I am in hopes that I shall see more of you at Castle Dracula. <laughs> listen to Regarding Dracula wherever you listen to podcasts, or find us online at bloody.fm.